thoughts and in love within my heart. Uh, magandang gabi mga kapatid. Uh, ito na po ang ating uh, pag-aaral po sa gabing ito sa ating uh, Facebook Live. Ito po ay para bagang kadugtong ng ating pinag-aralan noong lunes. At uh, mamaya po ipapaliwalag natin kung bakit kadugtong ano po. So sa ating mga nakikinig, good evening, good, good afternoon, good morning. Kung saan man kayo naroon at uh, ipapasalan po tayo kayo nakikinig, nanonood po sa ating pangangaral po sa Facebook. Dahil sa ating po mga kaigsoonan, mayroon gabi sa inyong tanan mga kaigsoon, sa ating mga kakabs- kakabsat, yan, sa Ilocano, kakabsat, kapatid, kabagis, na, na ibang rabi, kadakoy amin, kakabsat, at sa ating po mga katugangan sa Bicol Region, dyan sa may Camarones Norte, Camarones Sul, at saka sa Sorsogon, Diyos marahay na banggi sa Indugamus. Yan ang ating mga katugangan, ano po? Mga tugang ng Kristo. Uh, dito po sa may Pangasinan. Masanto siya labi, at si kayo namin. At sa may Carabao Island, kung nanonood man kayo, mayad-ayad ang gabi sa inyong tanan. Uh, dito po sa amin, sa mga pangga, may pabingi ko nga. So, ang ating po mga uh, Pag-aaralan ay may kadugtog po ng ating pinag-aaralan noong nakarang lunis. Kasi po ito isang uh, concern sa isang bagay na maraming churches ang ginagawa na sila po ay nagkakaroon ng birthday celebration sa loob ng church building. So ito, ito ay isang social event na kailang ginagawa na hindi naman po spiritual. Ay, hindi naman po yan pangangaral ng Ebanghelyo, hindi rin pagsamba, at hindi rin po pagtong sa pangangilangan ng mga kapatid. Kaya po yung ating ito ipinag-aralan, baka para mapag-aralan po, ano po, hindi po ito personal na bagay, kundi mapag-aralan po natin, study, kung ano po talagang katotohanan na sinasabi ng panalaksunata. Ang maraming response Ang sinasabi nila, wala naman daw nababasang ito'y pinagbabawal. We cannot read from the scriptures that it is being forbidden. Yung pong birthday celebration in, inside the church building or yung observance of church anniversaries. Yung lara, wala naman daw pinagbabawal. There is no prohibition from the scriptures. Kaya ibig sabihin, they are arguing on the premium of the silence of the scriptures. Sila po ay nagmamatwid na ayon po sa katayhimikan ng banalaksulatan. Yun ang makikita natin. Kaya manabuti natin ito yung ating bigyang pansin at pag Anyway, kung hindi po kayo maaaring manood ng live, ito na po ay dinadownload po sa Facebook, uh, YouTube pala, YouTube. Doon po sa Angeles City South Side Church of Christ account. Mag-subscribe po kayo doon. Lahat po ng mga videos na ating pag-aaral sa Facebook. Lahat po ng mga mensahe sa Angela City South Side Church of Christ every Sunday morning, eh, every Sunday afternoon. Nandun doon po lahat. Uh, so, uh, pwede nyo yung review yung mga lahat po ng ating uh, pinag-aralan at inayaral dito po sa ating Facebook Live simula pa noong 2020. So ito po ay nagiging tatlong taon na uh, na ginagawa sa Facebook. So ang ating pag-aaralan, when the Lord says nothing. Kung walang sinasabi ang Diyos tungkol sa isang bagay, anong ating gagawin? When the Lord says nothing, what are we going to do? Kung isang bagay ay hindi naman binabangit ng Panginoon na ating gagawin, ano ang ating gagawin? Yan po ang ating gustong Uh, pag-aralan po sa kaping ito. Maari ba natin gawin ng isang bagay na wala tayong mababasa sa Biblia? Can we, can we do something that is not authorized by the Scriptures? Wala tayong mababasa. 
Kasi may gagpwede ba natin gawin? Walang sinasabi ng Panginoon. Yun po yung mahalaga kasi kung papasinin natin um, sa ating kapaligiran, sa mga denominations, ganun sila. They are doing some some things that are authorized by the scriptures. So ito pong ating titignan. When the Lord says nothing, what shall we do? If the, the silence of the scriptures, what does it mean? Ano bang ibig sabihin pag walang sinasabi ang banalak sulatan tungkol sa isang bagay? Yan po ang ating gustong bigyang pansin dito po sa ating pag-aaral ngayong gabi. Walang-walang tingnan po natin. First of all, all authority is in Christ. Lahat po ng otoridad sa scriptures, sa spiritual, ay nasa ating Panginoon. Wala po sa atin. Wala, rin, wala din po sa church. The church has no right to do something not authorized by Christ. Kahit pa sabihin nilang pinagkasunduan nila na gawin ng isang bagay, ng isang local church, because it is autonomous, hindi pa rin pwede yun. We are autonomous, yes. Pero kailangan tayo sumulog sa katoridad ng ating Panginoon. Just because it is agreed by the local church that they're going to do something that it is authorized. Ephesians chapter 1, tignan po natin. Dito po sa Ephesians chapter 1, verse, 20, verse 22 to verse 23, lahat ng mga bagay sa iglesia ay kinakailangan ay authorized ng ating Panginoon. Tignan natin, masayin po natin muna sa Tagalog, sa ating wika. At kanyang inilagay ang lahat ng mga bagay sa ilalim ng kanyang mga paa. At ginawa siyang ulo ng lahat ng mga bagay sa iglesia na siyang katawan niya, ang kapuspusan niya na pupuspos ng lahat sa lahat. Okay. We read it in English, the New King James uh, Version, the version which I used in my study. Dito po sa Ephesians chapter 1, babasahin po natin. Lahat ng mga bagay, all things in the church, should be authorized by the Lord. Basahin natin. And he put all things under his feet and gave him to be head over all things to the church, which is his body, the fullness of him who fills all in all. He is the head over all things to the church. So lahat ng mga bagay sa loob ng iglesia ay dapat ay nasa otoridad ng ating Panginoon. All things are authorized by the Lord in the church. So Colossians 3.17 Whatever, whatever you do in word or deed, do all in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God the Father through Him. The name of the Lord means in the authority of Christ. Whatever we do in word or deed, should be authorized by the Lord. Yun ang sinasabi ni Pablo sa Colossians 3.17. In other words, we cannot do something not authorized by the Lord. Very simple, di ba? Sa Matthew 28 verse 18, before the Lord ascended, bago po pumunta sa langit ng Panginoon, itong kanyang inabilin sa kanyang mga lagat. And Jesus came and spoke to them, saying, All authority has been given to me in heaven and on earth. Lahat ng otoridad sa langit at sa lupa. Ito sa mga larangan ng mga bagay na spiritual ay nasa ating Panginoon. So, ibig sabihin, we do not have authority to do, to do things in, in, sa ating pananampalataya. We cannot uh, make ourselves the authority of things we do in the, the realm of spiritual Kundi sa ating Panginoon. Jesus came and spoke to them saying, All authority has been given to me in heaven and on earth. We should have the authority of Christ in everything we do and everything we preach. Yung makikita na. Very simple, di ba? Walang problema yun. If you understand it correctly, all things and all we preach should be authorized by the Lord. It's very simple, di ba? Wala tayo, wala ang problema doon. Hindi ko alam sa iba. And this authority is expressed by in three ways. Three avenues of authority. Number one, if we have a direct 
command or statement kung meron tayong diretsyong pangusap o utos na galing sa ating Panginoon. Dito sa Acts chapter 10, for instance, doon sa bautismo po ni Cornelius, itong basahin po natin. Acts chapter 10, verse 48. Eh, ito po ang ating makikita. Ito. And he commanded them to be baptized in the name of the Lord. Then they asked him to stay a few days. He commanded them to be baptized in the name of the Lord, in the authority of the Lord. This is different from the Second Thessalonians chapter three, verse six. This is a pangalang sulat po ni Pablo sa mga Thessalonica. But we command you, brethren, in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. That you withdraw from every brother who walks disorderly and not according to the tradition which you received from us. So in the name of the Lord, you withdraw in the authority of the Lord. So if you read something in the authority of the Lord, a direct command or statement, then we have authority from the Lord. Number two, sometimes you do not, you do not have a direct command or direct statement. Kumisa wala tayong utos o pangusap na mababasa na galing sa ating Panginoon. So dito po, yung approved apostolic example. An example, if it is approved by the apostles, is a command which is being observed. You think isang utos na kailang ginagawa even if you do not read about the command. If the Christians are doing something which is not sinful, then by necessary inference, they are just obeying a command which sometimes we do not know. Hindi lang sula. But ginawa nila, hindi sila nagkasala. So ito ay isang authority. This is a Philippians chapter 4 verse 9, sabi ni Pablo, The things which you learned and received and heard and saw in me. This do and the God of peace will be with thee. Things which they learn by the preaching of Paul, which they received and heard, and saw in Paul. Ibig sabihin kung ano nakita nila kay Apostle Paul, to the example of Paul, sabi niya. Sabi niya ni Apostle Paul, this do, and the God of peace will be with you. It's the first Corinthians chapter 11 verse 1. Kung si Pablo ay sumusunod sa kaloba ng Panginoon, Gagayaan nila sila. Kailangan nilang gayaan si Apostle Paul. 11 verse 1. Imitate me just I also imitate Christ. That's example, di ba? So if you have an example approved by the Apostles, pwede natin gawin. Kung di sila lang kaasahan, di tayo magkakasala. Or sometimes there is no direct command statement or approved Apostle example, but we have a necessary inference. An inference a conclusion which we derive from a verse. Yun ang sinasabi ng verse na hindi natin maiwasan. For instance, dito po sa Acts chapter 20, verse 7, nandito po yung uh, araw na kung saan uh, magkikita na kayo natin observe yung Lord's Supper. Now on the first day of the week, when the disciples came together to break bread, Paul, ready to depart the next day, spoke to them and continued his message until midnight. First day of the week. It says first day of the week. Every week as its first day. So that necessarily implies every first day of the week. Ganun din po sa, it is similar in Exodus chapter 20 verse 8 in, with regards to the Sabbath day. God said, remember to keep the Sabbath day holy. And the Sabbath, the Sabbath day falls on the seventh day. And every week as a seventh day. So it was a weekly observance by necessary inference. If it is a yearly observance, then the day of the specific month is specified. In the Apostle Leviticus chapter uh, 23, makikita natin verse 4 and 5, hindi po nagkakamali with regards to the Passover. Ito ang ating mababasa. Leviticus. Sabi rito, these are the feast of the Lord, holy convocations, uh, and which you shall proclaim at their appointed times. On the fourteenth day of the first month, at twilight, is the Lord's Passover. 
So the Jews observe the Lord's Passover every year on the 15th day of the first month. There is only one 15th day of the first month in every year. So that's a yearly observance. If it is a monthly observance, ibig sabihin, it's a particular day of a specific month. Of a month. Di ba? Makita natin. Yung po isang monthly observance. Pero ito, first day of the week. So it necessarily implies every week. A very simple example of a necessary inference is when Christ was baptized. It was not mentioned that he went into the water. But he came out of the water. So, ibig sabihin, hindi siya pwedeng labas sa tubig, kundi siya masa sa tubig. Yan ang ibig sabihin ng necessary inference. So, if we have a direct statement or direct, direct command, a proof of a story example or, or necessary inference, then we have authority from the Lord. Makita natin. In the absence of this, then we have no authority. Siya, napakasimple lang. Kung wala tayong mababasang utos o pangusap, wala tayong makikita ng proof of story example, wala tayong mababasang necessary inference, wala tayong otoridad mula sa ating Panginoon. Hindi ba napakadaling unawain nun? Di ba mga kapatid? For instance, that's instrumental music. Do we have a direct command or statement regarding the use of instrument in worship? Wala. There is not. Is there an approval example of Christians in the New Testament using instrumental music? There is not. So, ano ba makikita natin? There is no authority for instrumental music. So, mga ibig sabihin, sabihin, we should have, these are the three avenues to establish scriptural authority. Itong tatlong paraan para Ma malaman natin na meron tayong kayong otoridad mula sa ating Panginoon. Now, the, the controversy regarding the silence of the scriptures hindi lang, hindi, is, is not new. And during the Reformation, there were two kinds of views regarding authority. Huldrick Swingley, ito po si Swingley, makikita natin, ayon po sa kasaysayan, Huldrick Swingley, uh, ayun po rito, born January 1, 1484, Wildhaus, hindi ko ma I do not know the right pronunciation, in the Togenburg, St. Gallen, Switzerland. Died October 11, 1531, near Kapol. So, ang sabi rito, like Martin Luther, he accepted the supreme authority of the scriptures, but he applied it more rigorously and comprehensively to all doctrines and practices. In other words, Si Zwingli ay isang merong conservative na kaisipa. Ang sabi ni Zwingli, according to Zwingli, it is not allowed unless we could read it authorized in the scriptures. So sabi ni Zwingli, it is not allowed, we cannot do something unless we could read it authorized in the scriptures. To that effect, yun ang sabi ni Ulrich Zwingli. On the opposite side is Martin Luther. Sabi ni Martin Luther, it is allowed unless prohibited in the scriptures. So Martin Luther puts premium on silence. For Martin Luther, silence means authority. Uh, Zwingli, silence means no authority. When they are on the opposite side, di ba? Um, Martin Luther has the more liberal mindset. Zwingli has the more conservative mindset. During the Reformation, di makita natin. Pero, this, itaw lang ito. These are points of view of two men during the Reformation. But what is the Bible view on silence? Ano sinasabi ng Biblia tungkol sa silensyo? Kung tahimik ang Biblia, ano ang ating gagawin? The Bible has a more conservative mindset that's very consistent. Pag hindi sinabi ng Panginoon, hindi yung pwedeng gawin. For instance, the first Corinthians four chapter four verse six. Now this things, brethren, I have figuratively transferred to myself and Apollos for your sakes, that ye may learn in us not to think beyond what is written. That none of you may be puffed up on behalf of one against the other. You may learn in us not to think beyond what is written. In other words, by necessary inference, we could only obey what 
what is written, but we cannot go beyond what is written. Pag, pag ito yung hindi nakasulat, it's, it is not written, therefore it is silent. Hindi natin pwede gawin nyo. Ayon kay Apostle po. Ngayon din po si Apostle John. 2 John 9, Whoever transgresses and does not abide in the doctrine of Christ does not have God. At sino mang nagpapatuloy, di na nanasa ni Kristo, di ka rin ng Diyos, kanya. He who abides in the doctrine of Christ as both the Father and the Son. Ang sino mang nananatili sa ni Kristo ay nasa kanya ang matang anak kanya. So, ganun din ito. If you do not abide in the doctrine of Christ, wala, di, wala tayong pag-asa. So, doon lang tayo siya nakasulat. So, the boundary is what is written. Di ba? We cannot go beyond what is written. Ayon po kay Apostle Paul and Apostle John. So, ibig sabihin, talagang yun ang sinasabi ng Biblia. When it is, when there is silence, there is no law. When the Bible doesn't state anything on, on something, then it is, there is no law. Walang batas doon. If you do something that is not authorized, that is lawlessness. It is a Matthew chapter 7, verse 21 to verse 23. Many will say to me that day, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in your name? So these people are doing something in the name of the Lord. They presume that it is in the name of the Lord. Cast out demons in your name and done many wonders in your name. And then I will declare to them, I never knew you. Depart from me. You will practice lawlessness. When they presume that something in the name of the Lord, which is not actually authorized by the Lord, that's lawlessness. You're going be against the law of Christ. You know, so First Corinthians, um, chapter nine, we are under the law of Christ. So if you do something that is not found in the law of Christ, then that is lawlessness. You know, so First Corinthians chapter nine, say nothing. But to those who are without law or Gentiles. As without law, not being without law toward God, but under law toward Christ. That I might win those who are without law. We are under the law of Christ. So if you are beyond the law of Christ, or the, the law of Christ silent on, on a particular thing, and we do it, then that's lawlessness. We will not be saved. If you do something that is not authorized by the scriptures, we are not going to be saved. Sino maliligtas? Who are going to be saved? Those who follow the law of the Lord. Do you know? It is Matthew 7, verse uh, 21. Masayin po natin. We read Matthew chapter 7, verse 21. Itong ating mababasa. We read, Not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, shall enter the kingdom of heaven, but he who does the will of my Father in heaven. The will of the Father is the same will of Christ. Dahil yung tinuro ng ating Panginoon, yan din kalooban ng Ama, di ba? So we, we do not follow the will of the Father or the will of Christ, we cannot enter the kingdom, di ba? Very simple. If we do something that's found in the will of Christ or in the will of the Father, that's lawlessness. Even if you are sincere in doing it, if you do, it is not found in the love of Christ, that's still lawlessness. Well, hindi ka pa rin maliligtas. Kahit gano'ng ka pakatapat, kasinsir sa ginagawa mo, na ito'y mabuti, wala lang masama, yun ay siya kaisipan mo. Hindi siya kaisipan ng Diyos. What is good in terms of our faith is the will of the Lord. That is what is good. Beyond that, it's not good. <laughs> Napakasimple lang po noon. Even if you say something, you presume something is good, in our own mindset, that is not still good if it is not found in the will of the Lord. So if you do good works, that means we are obeying the will of the Lord. It's simple lang po yun. Kaya kung, kung wala sa kalooban ng ating Panginoon, 
And we do it, that's lawlessness. We cannot enter the kingdom of the Lord or the kingdom of heaven if you are lawless. Hindi tayo sumusunod sa kalooban ng ating Panginoon. Diba napakasimple lang po niya? Man, that's it's very simple to understand. If you are really seeking for the truth and not trying to justify something that is not found in the scriptures. Napakasimple lang. Hindi ko maintindihan bakit nahihirapan tayo ma- maunawaan ito, mga kapatid. We have to we have to study it very carefully. We aren't interested in what the Lord did not say or what the Bible doesn't say. We are interested in what the Bible says, in what in what the Lord says. Luke chapter 6, verse 46. But why do we call me Lord, Lord meaning Master, and do not do the things which I say? What's the point of calling the Lord as our Master if we do not obey the things that He says? Now, the Lord did not say, and do not do the things which I did not say. The Lord said, and do not, and do, not do the things which I say. So, may ang mag-ibig sabihin niyan. Pag, ta, pag tahimik, hindi sinabi ng Panginoon, hindi kalooban ng Panginoon yun. Very simple, di ba? So, that's the Bible view of silence. Now, Tignan po natin ang practical side, practical application. People say, oh, the Bible didn't say it's prohibited, so we can do it. Well, where, where does the Bible say you should not use instrumental music? I'm in the New Testament. Under the New Testament, where do we see that instrumental music is specifically prohibited? There is not. So if you put premium on silence, say it is not prohibited by the New Testament, so we could do it. So in other words, following that mindset, then it is scriptural to use instrumental music. But that is against what the Bible is specified with regards to music, which are going to use in worship. It is singing is specified. So if sing is specified, that's the particular kind of music, then instrumental music is necessarily excluded even if there is no prohibition that we can read in the scriptures. Pero kung saan sabihin na, if you, if, if you argue, we can do it because it is not prohibited by the scriptures, we can do all kinds of things not prohibited by the scriptures. For instance, the American Christian Missionary Society is that specifically prohibited in the scriptures? Oh, there is no prohibition specifically, so we can do it. It goes against the congregational system of the church, elders in every church. So there is no need to, to, to read the prohibition regarding certain things for us to realize that those aren't authorized. For instance, God specified that Noah will use gopher wood. Did God say, do not use uh, mahogany, do not use nara, do not use acacia wood? God didn't have to say that because he specified the kind of wood. So if you follow the uh, argument, if it is not prohibited, then we could do it. Then Noah could have used other, other kinds of wood. And not sin before God, do you? But that isn't what Noah understood. He obeyed the details that God gave him. How about choir? Choirs during worship. Where do we read the new, in the New Testament that we should not have choirs in worship? There is none. So if you follow the argument, unless it is prohibited by the scriptures, then we could have choirs during worship because it is not specifically prohibited in the New Testament or about Christian bands. Those who have, those, some denominations, they may ban with electric guitars, bass, drums, keyboards. 
is that specifically prohibited in the New Testament? Yung ba'y pinagbabawal? Marami tayo mababasa. So, ganun ang ating kasi, pwede natin gawin yan. So, yun, yun po, mag, yun ang maging konklusyon ng argumento na kung hindi pinagbabawal, yun, pwede natin gawin. That's against the scriptures. Dito sa 1 Peter chapter 3, yun po. Yun ang sabi, if anyone speaks, let him speak as the oracles of God. Uy siya, ang aral ng Diyos. If anyone ministers, let him do it with the ability which God supplies, that in all things God may be glorified through Jesus Christ, to whom belong the glory and the dominion forever and ever. Amen. So yun na sinasabi ni Apostle Peter. Kung tayo rin po magsasalita, magsasalita tayo na salita ng Diyos, ng kautusan ng Diyos. Hindi na ng ating sariling kaisipan. Yun sinasabi sa atin ng ni Apostle uh, Paul, Apostle Peter. If you have to speak, speak as the oracles of God, sabi niya. So, hindi tayo pwede magsalita ng ibang bagay na hindi pa nagutos ng ating Panginoon. Wala sa kanya ba nalang sinata. A very good example regarding the Bible view of silence is Christ. Alam po natin, Jesus came from the tribe of Judah and not from the tribe of Levi. In the Levi, itong tribo ni Levi, nagaling ang mga saserdote. The priest and came from the tribe of Levi, specifically from the sons of Aaron. It's a Numbers. Masayin na sa Numbers. Numbers chapter 1. Masayin po natin. Magkikita na specifically kung ano po yung magiging pwede maging saserdote sa mga lahi ni ni na Israel anong what tribe will the priests come from san sila anong le anong lai masaya natin ito mababasa natin numbers ano po but you shall uh, verse 49 only the tribe of levi you should not number nor take a census of them among the children of Israel but you shall appoint the levites over the tabernacle of the testimony over all its furnishings, over all things that belong to it, they shall carry the tabernacle, and all its furnishings they shall attend to it and come around the tabernacle. And when the tabernacle is to go forward, the Levites shall take it down, and when the tabernacle is to be set up, the Levites shall set it up. The outsider who comes near shall be put to death. The children of Israel shall pitch their tents, everyone by his own camp, everyone by his own standard according to the armies. But the Levi shall camp around, around the tabernacle of the testimony, that there be no wrath on the congregation of the children of Israel, and the Levi shall keep charge of the tabernacle of the testimony. So, yung mga sacerdote ay nasa lahi ni Levi. At yung may mga kaugnayan dun sa tabernacle ng kapisanan ay galing lahat sa lahi ni Levi. Exodus chapter 28, verse 1. Sayin natin. Now take Aaron, your brother, and his sons with him from among the children of Israel that he may minister to me as priest. Aaron and Aaron's sons, Nadab, Abihu, Eleazar, and Ithamar. And later on, Nadab and Abihu were killed. So, dalawa na lang natira, Eleazar and Ithamar. And you shall make, verse 3, So you shall speak to all who are gifted artisans, whom I have filled with the spirit of wisdom, that they may make Aaron's garments to consecrate him, that he may minister to me as priest. So the priest came from the tribe of Levi. Pero sa tribe ni Judah, there was no specific prohibition regarding the tribe of Judah with regards to priesthood. Moses did not say they cannot be priests. Neither did Moses say they can be priests. The law of Moses was silent on the tribe of Judah with, regard, with regards to priesthood. So, ang tanong, question, will someone from Judah become a priest under the law of Moses? You know, Hebrews chapter 7, verse 14, For it is evident that our Lord arose from Judah, of which Moses spoke nothing concerning priesthood. Moses was silent 
regarding priest, the tribe of Judah regarding priesthood coming from the tribe. Tahimik lang. Hindi sinabing bawal. Moses didn't say it is prohibited specifically. Moses said nothing. Tahimik lang. Walang sinabi. Ang tanong, question, can, could Jesus become a priest under the law of Moses? Because the law of Moses was silent regarding Judah with regards to priesthood. If you follow the premium of silence, that if it is not specifically prohibited, then it is allowed. Hebrews chapter 8, verse 4. For if he were on earth, he would not be a priest. Since there are priests who offer the gifts according to the law. So Jesus cannot be a priest under the law of Moses. This proves very clearly then when the Bible is silent, then there is no authority. The law of Moses was silent with, with regarding Judah with regards to the priesthood. It meant, it means, it is prohibited for Judah, for people from Judah to become priests. So, hindi pwede yan, di ba? Tayo hindi pwede. Hindi pwede. Hindi pwede ang ating Panginoon na maging sasardote sa ilalim ng for if you were on earth, he would not be a priest, since there are priests who offer the gifts according to the law. Hebrews 8 4. Now, where do we read in the Bible that people from Judah cannot be priests in the Old Testament? We cannot read. But they cannot be they cannot be priests. People from Judah cannot be priests. Even if the law of Moses, Moses did not specifically prohibit it. They, that, they, that they could be priests. So, dito makikita na ang pangaliwanag dito. Hindi na, hindi na natin kailangan mabasa pa na, na bawal. It is not necessary for us to, to read something that something is prohibited for us not to do it. Because silence of the scriptures means no authority. Very simple, di ba? Very simple. Hindi natin kailangan mag... Maging matalino para maintindihan natin yan. Another example is Nadab, Nadab, and Abihu. Leviticus 10 verse 1. Then Nadab and Abihu, the sons of Aaron, each took his censer and put it, put fire in it, put incense on, the, on, on it, and offered profane fire before the Lord, which he had not commanded them. They offered a profane fire. This is not authorized fire by the Lord. What happened to them? God did not prohibit this kind of fire. Neither did the authorize it. Leviticus 10 verse 2. So fire went out from the Lord and devoured them and they died before the Lord. It's just fire. What's dif what is the difference between the fire that the Nadab and Abihu used and the authorized fire which the Lord commanded. It's still fire. But why they were but by the official and Dios? Why were they killed by the Lord? Because they did not obey the Lord. So when we when we do something that authorized by the Lord, we are not obeying the Lord. Even if there's the specific specific prohibition regarding the thing. So, tama, swinging is correct. Unless it is authorized, then we cannot do it. If there is no authority, then we cannot do it. Martin Luther is wrong. Unless it is prohibited, then it is allowed. Then we can do it. Martin Luther is wrong. Makikita na si mali. We must have authority from Christ. We do not have infant baptism. We do not read prohibition regarding infant baptism. But infant baptism is not authorized by the Lord. We cannot read any prohibition about instrumental music and worship. But instrumental music is not authorized by the Lord. We cannot read of centralized, that centralized eldership is specifically prohibited in the scriptures. But that is not authorized by the Lord. How about church-sponsored recreation or human institutions? Do we read a prohibition in the New Testament? There is none. But it is, they are not authorized by the Lord. 
How about clapping during worship? Do we read of any prohibition about clapping in worship? No, but it is not authorized by the Lord. So we cannot do, do these things because they are not authorized by the Lord. Now we go back to the issue. Where do we read, where do we read that celebrating birthday parties inside the building is authorized? Yes, there is no prohibition. That's correct. But where is the authority? It is not a matter of prohibition. That's not the point. The point is, where is the authority? Where is the direct matter statement? Where is the proper example? Where is the necessary inference? When we ask brethren practicing birthday celebration in the scriptures regarding their authority, they cannot answer it because they have no authority. When we ask people using instrument and uh, musical instrument and worship in the new where do, you, where do you find authority in the New Testament regarding your instrumental music? They cannot answer. They go back to the New Te Old Testament. That, that necessarily implies they have no authority in the New Testament, isn't it? Because if they have, they will read it. Bakit hindi sumasagot ang mga kapatid na ito? Kung saan ang autoridad nila mula sa kasulatan? Ang sinasagot nila, hindi naman bawal. It is not a matter of this, this being prohibited, but it is a matter of where is the authority? Saan ang autoridad? That's the point. Because all authority is from Christ. We do not have the authority coming from ourselves. We cannot invent something and say it is authorized by the Lord if it is it is not authorized by the Lord. Napaka simple lang po niya. There is divisions happen among brethren because of that mindset, the liberal mindset. If it is not prohibited, then we could do it. If it is a good thing, even if we do not read in the scriptures, then it is author. It, then we can do it. No, we only do things, we only preach things if they are authorized by the Lord. So you know, it's simply lang po yan, mga patid, simple. During the restoration period, the same controversy happened. Sabi po ni Thomas Campbell, we speak where the Bible speaks, we are silent where the Bible is silent. That's correct. We could only do things if they are written in the scriptures. If the Bible is silent, we cannot do those things because there is no authority. And magkita natin during the restoration movement, um, they also have controversies regarding things. For instance, in the 1850s, there was a controversy on instrumental music and worship. A, bro a brother named L.L. L. Pinkerton advocated the use of instrument of music and worship by saying it is not forbidden in the Bible. The same argument. So he introduced the millennium Melodion or Melodion to the Church of Midway, Kentucky. And that, that started the, the division among brethren. So this is not in the Poito, this is not a simple thing. When brethren argues, argue, start to argue, we could do it because it is not specifically prohibited in the scriptures. We are in trouble. Uh, natin, we are in the 1950s, 60s again. We are again in the 1850s. When brethren start to argue, it is, if it is not prohibited, then it is authorized. It is allowed. That's the liberal mindset. Pag hindi tayo nag-ingat, that will result in a division. Kaya nagkakaroon ng division eh. Division occurs because of two different contrary mindsets. The conservative mindset says, if it is not authorized, we cannot do it. If there is no scriptural authority, we cannot do it. The liberal mindset says, even if we do not have authority, if it is not specifically prohibited, 
If it is good, if it results in good, then we can do it. That's the rebel mindset. So in 1906, there was an official division among two groups of brethren. The Church of Christ, the Churches of Christ which do not use the instrument, and the Christian Church which is the instrument. In the 1950s, 60s, the institutional controversy. There was a division. The same problem, different mindsets on authority, on the silence of the scriptures. So, magigita natin, the Bible says silence means no authority. You must have authority from Christ. You know, you know, napaka simple lang, very simple. We must have authority from Christ in order to do practice, do certain practice, or preach certain doctrines. This should be authorized by the Lord. The only authorized doctrine is the doctrine of Christ. So, kung wala sa aral ng Panginoon, hindi natin pwedeng gawin. Dito sa Acts chapter 3, verse 22 to verse 24, Atin mabasahin. Then is Acts chapter 3, verse 22 to verse 24. For Moses truly said to the fathers, The Lord your God will raise up for you a prophet like me from your brethren. Him you shall hear in all things, whatever he says to you, and it shall be that every soul who will not hear that prophet shall be utterly destroyed from among the people. Sabi rito, natin, The Lord your God will raise up for your prophet like me from your bread. Him you shall hear in all things, whatever he says to you. You can only do what the Lord says. Luke 6, verse 46. Why do we call the Lord, Lord, and do not do that and do not do the things which I say. We are interested in the will of the Lord, in what He has to say, and not in things that He did not say. So, silence means no. We have to respect what He has not said. Hindi makikita natin. Pag hindi sinabi, wala natin autoridad. Napakasimple lang po no. So, pag, kung hindi tayo mag if you are not being careful in you know, the observance of scriptural authority and in the meaning of the silence of the scriptures, it will result in lawlessness. Tayo lalabas mula sa kalaban ng Panginoon. Authority from the Lord is a boundary of the things which we can preach and things which we can practice in in religion. If you go beyond that boundary, then there is no limit about things which we can do without authority. You might another if you if you go beyond that scriptural boundary, the authority of Christ, we're in trouble. Gagawin mo na gusto mong gawin. For instance, those brethren now natin, we will practice celebrating birthday parties inside the building by saying it is not prohibited. Eventually, they will do other things on the basis that they are not prohibited, not on the basis that they are authorized by the law. We will sow the wind. We will rip the whirlwind. They, we cannot have little liberalism without ripping the whole facet of liberalism. We need to stay within the authority of Christ. We need to stay within the boundary of the authority of Christ. Because this is His church, not ours. We cannot do our own doctrine. We cannot do our own practice. But we can, only, we can only do what the Lord says. We can only preach the doctrine of Christ. And do what the Lord wills. What says the scriptures. 
not what the scripture doesn't say. Mabalik tayo ulit sa, con- sa the contra- controversy. Martin Luther said, unless it is prohibited, then we can do it. Swingley said, unless it is authorized, then we cannot do it. Thomas Campbell said, we speak where the Bible speaks. We are silent where the Bible is silent. And uh, Pinkerton said, unless it is prohibited, then we could do it. Just like Martin Luther. So I am concerned because of what these brethren are doing. Because it may result in a worse in worse things than just celebrating birthday parties inside the building. It might result in a division later on. We saw the wind, we will rip the whirlwind. This is First Timothy chapter 4, verse 16. Paul said to Timothy, Take heed to yourself and to the doctrine. Continuing them, for in doing this, you'll save both yourself and those who hear you. We have to be very careful in what we are teaching, in what we are practicing. We only can do things authorized by the Lord. All authority belongs to the Lord. We do not have authority whatsoever. So ito po ang ating pag-aaral. Maraming salamat. Thank you very much sa inyong payikinig. Maraming salamat po mga kapatid at mga kaibigan. Yeah.
yung mga may comments no? Hello, Jill and Leia Good evening Carol Gabriel po sa Lunga Good evening Leo Tito Torolisa, Nahibag, Arabi Kadafayam, Kamsat, Translation Good evening Good evening to every brother Jenny Morale, good evening po Jen Bautista, good evening May tanong po si Amiri Ronnie Romero, good evening po Old John Ocampo, good evening po. Si Rod uh, Solidad Ugali. Wala tayo. Ayan pang isa, nakalindi ko na ano. Rod Dapioen da, da Baagin. Good evening po. Solidad Ugali Banao. Good evening brother watching. Robinson Ederlin Pulveras. Good evening Greetings from downstream of Cagayan po sa inyong lahat. Nasa dulo po ng Cagayan province po yun, sa Northern Luzon po. May mga tanong po rito si Amiri. What does scripture say about Tibur's 13 form? Saan ka po natin? Di ma- Wala naman po ito sa ating pinag-aralan, pero tinato, no? Sa Amiri ito, Tibur's 13 form. Uh, Saan lang po natin. Mary is honorable among all the bed and defiled but fornicators, adulterers, God will jam. Ibig sabihin, kailangan po natin ingatan ng pag-aasawa na po. Pag nag-asawa ka, doon, doon lang ka sa asawa mo. Matthew 6.6. Ito'y sa panalangin. Uh, sabi rito, what does the Bible what does the Bible mean in Matthew 6.6? Ito ang tanong ni ni Amiri. Ang talong po ito eh. Try natin. So, po, but you, when you pray, go into your room, and when you have shut your door, pray to your father who is in secret place, and your father who is in secret will reward you openly. Ibig sabihin, pag nanalangin tayo, huwag tayo, huwag tayo magpakita sa mga tao. Nanalangin lang tayo yung sekreto sa Diyos. Yun po sinasabi sa Matthew 6.6. Isang kasi yung mga tao na nanalangin para makita lang sila ng tao na nanalangin. Iba na po pinag-uusapan dun sa... Uh, public worship, yung public prayer ba yun? Ito yung personal na panalangin natin sa Diyos. Genesis 2.24, refer to marriage. Ibig sabihin, pag nag-asama, iwanan mo na yung magulang mo at pag-asama ka sa asama mo. Yan ang sinasabi ni ng Diyos sa Genesis 2.24. Ephesians 4.29, going to church and worship every Sunday, not enough to be saved. That's part of that's Part lang po yun. Mar- marami pa tayong gagawin. So, kinakailangan po nating gawin ng ibang mga bagay. Dito sa Ephesians 4.29, No corrupt word proceed out of your mouth, but what is good and for necessary identification that, that, that it may impart grace to the hearing. Sabihin, ingatan natin ang ating 
salita, yung sinasabi lang to. Psalm 98.5-6 mentioned trumpets and sound of a horn, but that's in the Old Testament. Nung po sa Old Testament, pwede tayong guma- pwede gumamit ng panagtog, pero hindi si bagong tipanin. Mayroon pong humabol, si Danilo Dasilio, magandang gabi po kapatid watching po. Maraming salamat sa mga nag-comments dito sa ating uh, pangangaral. Maraming salamat. Thank you very much. So, mag-iwalay po tayo as well sa may kiling panalain. Kaya po yung manalain. Kung manal, kaya po yung muli nagpapasalamat sa oras na ito na Meron kayong pagkakato na isiwanat ang inyong katotohanan. Dinadalangin namin ama na sana po yung mga nagikinig kay buksan ang kailang kaisipan upang tunghayan na lamang kung ano ang inyong kalooban. Huwag na po kayo maging marunong sa aming sarili mga kahaka. Pwede kami magpagima pagkumaba at sunod lamang sa inyong kalooban ng Diyos. Sana po yung mabigyan niyo kami pagkakato at magpatuloy po yung gawain ito. Hindi lang po sa Facebook hindi sa lahat ng pagkakato na Makapangal po kami sa mga tao at nagtanggapin nila ang Evangelio at sila'y maligtas. Natuwaan niyo kami sa ayong mga pagkakamali at ang mga bayan ito ay mga inihi. Nagkilang pa ang Presyo Kristo. Amen. Maraming salamat. God bless. Take care.